Hey what's going on guys, today we are going to see how to make this cute little goldfish move around with shader graph. That's right guys, it may seem very simple but it isn't. And I believe we haven't seen yet how to use vertex animation in this channel and this is a very good example. And by the way, these videos are mostly possible thanks to my patrons and in case you are interested in supporting me, you will get awesome rewards like visual effects packages from projectiles to area of effects, orbs, shaders and many more effects for your games or for your projects. I'll have the link in the description, go check it out, it's really worth it. So let's see how we can do this. Alright, so if you want to follow along with this fish, you can download it here in Blend Swap and the links in the description. It's a Blender file, but if you don't have Blender to export as an FBX, you can directly import the Blend file to Unity. So the next step is to create a new PBR graph, name it Fish Animation, which we need because we also want to use the normals, emission, metallic, smoothness and alpha clip properties to make our goldfish look great. So once it's created, you can open it in Shader Graph. And the first thing we need is to turn on double sided. It will just help to make some minor bugs a little bit less visible. Anyway, the most important stuff in this shader is the vertex animation part. And that's where we are going to start. Because if I come here to the shader I already created, you will see that I use all of these properties just to make the goldfish look pretty. And we will leave this to the end. So the first thing we need to understand is that this shader will be lurping between the normal position of the fish and an animated position of the fish. And for that we are exactly going to use the lurp node. And we can get the position of the fish, the normal position of the fish, with the position node, which we need to switch to object space. And connect it to the input A of the lurp node. And by the way, for those who don't know, the lerp node will output a mix between A and B according to the T input. Meaning that if T is 0, it will only output A, which in this case is red, and if it's 1, it will only output B, which is blue. And all the values between are a mix of A and B. So that's it. And in our case, A is going to be the normal position of our fish, and B is going to be the animated version. And we are going to split these values so we can access the RGB channels, which are basically the X, Y and Z axis. And we are going to literally only be changing the R channel, the X axis, which we are going to add something that will make the fish wobble, something that will make the fish move over time, basically. And that's really it. The G and B channels are going to stay the same, which means we can use a combined note or you can even use a vector tree node, it will do the same thing. And we can connect the G and B, and don't forget the R, just like this. Now the result of this node, we can connect it to the B input of the lerp node. Alright, so this by itself, on its own, it's not gonna do anything. It's basically lerping between the two exact same positions. So let's go ahead and make it move. And the way we mostly make things move in shaders, is with a time node. And this time node will be multiplied by a vector 1, which we can add in the properties panel and call it the wobble speed, for example, with a default value of 0 0.5 or maybe even more. Now let's multiply both of these. And our next step is to get access to the mesh position, but in world space and it will allow us to control in which axis it's going to move, it's going to wobble. For example, in the first shader I made, I let the user choose if they want the wobble to happen horizontally or vertically. Alright, so in our case, let's for now multiply the G channel that represents the Y axis with a vector 1 that we can also add in the properties panel and that is going to control the wobble frequency with a default value of 2. Alright, we can connect it to the multiply nodes and now with this we can go ahead and add movement with the wobble speed. We are literally going to scroll along the Y axis. And now we only need to pass this information to the R channel, the X axis of the local object position. 
but we still need something to control the lerp node, the t value, and we can create a vector tree for now that is going to help us to see this in action. All right, we can save this and now back to Unity. We can actually go ahead and create a material with right click in our shader. And uh, now let me erase this and push the material to the respective folder. All right, now in Goldfish, we can assign it to the first element of the material slot. And we are only going to use one material for this now. And down here, if I start increasing the X to a tiny value like 0.0001, the fish gets a massive offset for such a low number. And if I increase the bubble frequency to a lot, we can only start to see some movement happening. And this is happening because we are in fact only offsetting the fish and not making it wobble and not adding movement. It basically goes to a certain distance and it doesn't come back. Let's put it that way. And the way we make it wobble is with a sine or cosine note this note and in the preview we can see this is scrolling already which is good because the white values will offset the fish while the black values will leave it in the same position making the fish wobble and if we multiply this with a vector one we are basically controlling how much it will offset and we can call it the wobble distance with a default value of 0 0.5 and not 0 0.05, sorry. And it can be even more, by the way. Let's connect it to the multiply and replace the connection to the add. All right, let's save this. And now the cool thing is that if we increase the X value of the vector tree, we can start seeing this wobbling around in the Y axis. We can even increase the distance a little bit and now if we increase the frequency our poor goldfish seems like it's starting to suffer from a rare fish disease or something like that. Poor guy. Anyway, it's still pretty cool, the effect, right? And it's influencing only in the Y axis as you can see. And this can be controlled right here when we split the position node. If we switch to the R channel, we are basically making the sine wave go across the X axis as you can see. And we can also switch it to the Z axis if we connect to the B channel like this. And we can literally see the sine wave in action. But let's leave it in the X for now, the R channel. And now it's only a matter of adjusting these values. But that's basically it for the animation of the fish, the wobbling of the fish. Let's just change this vector tree to a vector 1 and call it wobble amount for example. And we can delete the vector tree. It's going to be a slider between 0 and 1, by the way. And then let's simply connect it to the T input of the LERP and that's it. We will see in a moment how this is working. Now, if you want, you can add the albedo, the normal, the emission, the metallic, the smoothness, the alpha and the alpha creep threshold properties. And I'm not gonna go through them, but you can pause the video and copy them. Basically. The only thing you need to pay attention is that I'm splitting the main texture and accessing the alpha channel to connect it to the alpha. And with a vector 1 connected to the clip threshold, which is basically a slider, we will be basically able to control the transparency of the tails and the fins as well, which I will show you in a moment. So. I'm just going to copy and paste this. You can go ahead and pause the video and copy these notes and connect them like this. And after you have done so, in the Unity, we can assign the main texture if you are using this fish. If you are using another fish, it's up to you, you know. I'm just going to assign the main texture, the normal strand, the emission map, the metallic map, the smoothness map, and make some adjustments as well. You can copy my values if you want. And now down here, we have the alpha clip threshold. And if we start increasing it, you will see that it's starting to clip some parts of the tail and some parts of the fin of our gold fish. And it's awesome. Now if we increase a little bit the wobble amount, we get our fish moving around. And if you guys want, you can even put it inside a fish bowl like this and it looks great. It's an awesome shader with several possibilities, by the way. 
yeah, that's basically it, guys. And I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. And I want to say a special thank you to my super mega patrons, which are Alex Dixon, Carl's Guides, Christian Mercino, Goblin Black, James Finley, Jens Anderson, Johnny X, Juan Mendiola, Mac Murter, Ricky Klein, Shamsu Abuker, Tirita, X Game Dev, and the Ioni. You guys are awesome and thank you for your very important support. I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope to see you in the next one.